Okay, so we're going to um, open up sterile procedure today. And I've got my assistant, my coworker, Nina, helping me here. Um, so I've already opened up my, my back counter. And I'm not sure if you can see this in the operatories, but I've got my patient drape and I've got my irrigation bowl here and pretty much everything I need for my surgery right here, okay? Um, so I've got a sterile needle, I've got my sterile monojets, I've got sterile gauze, two by twos and four by fours. I've got my indicator that tells me that my tray is sterile. Um, that we can't have paper tray covers, so I have a towel underneath all my instruments that goes through laundry and then it gets re-sterilized, of course. So pretty much everything that we'll need for this procedure is here. Even though our patient, Courtney, got anesthetic and pre-op, I'm still gonna um, set up the local for the surgery, just in case she needs a little top up, okay? So I already have my needle and what Nina will do. I don't have sterile uh, carpules of anesthetic here, but we order them in boxes and some offices just for clean procedures pops them all out into a drawer or, or a container and you grab it and you're good to go. For surgery, you have to leave them in those sterile packages and you pop them out as you need them, okay? And then once we've opened that package once, we can only use it once for an implant and then the rest of those carpules will go to do like a clean procedure, all right? Does that make sense? Okay. So, Nina, I'll get you to open me um, right on top there. Nope, just clean hands. Okay. That very top package. So, yeah, th those are utility drapes. And so what I want to do now is I want to expand my sterile field. Drop it, nope, okay. nope. So if I was by myself, I would have opened and dropped onto the sterile field, which you have to do sometimes when you're by yourself, but it's not ideal. Best practice is me scrubbed in, Nina open and I grab out, and then there's no potential for me to drop this. Excellent, okay? Dropping it like that, it can land on the edge of the side that's not too sterile, it could end up on the floor. It's just much better to open it and grab like that. So these are two little utility drapes. I just love them. Grab and drop. <laughs> um, I always say, so this is sterile. This was the little outside package for the utility drapes. I really like it because I'm gonna cover up my instruments with it after because when Courtney comes in I don't want to scare her with all this like sharp shiny looking <laughs> items and then this I'm gonna make a little bit more real estate for myself on, on my back table okay that I can put things on that are sterile and I think we're good with that I'm pretty happy with that good so I have an extra one I'm gonna put it here just in case I need it I'm gonna put my patient drape here because I'm gonna use it for something else. This is a patient drape for just a normal clean surgery. It's not that big. Um, but if you're having your wisdom teeth out or if you were having a biopsy or if you were having you know, a standard extraction, um, you, know, you would use this patient drape. But I wanna use a bigger one today because I wanna make sure that my patient is completely covered and that she's completely sterile and there's no risk of uh, any contamination whatsoever because we don't want her to get an infection infection in her bone <laughs> which is <laughs> which is start and, 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 and what, what's the name of bone infection what do we call bone infection? yay okay <laughs> so I'm going to be the assistant I'm going to be sitting on this side we use closed irrigation and we used closed suction when we do this type of procedures. Um, I don't want to use my triplex syringe. It's clean. Yes, we treat it with ICX tablets, but it's not sterile. Also, when we're doing surgery, you don't want to put air into the surgical site, okay, because of those air embolisms that people can get. So this is all I'm going to use to irrigate. Um, some um, implant hand pieces and modules come with um, an ear, like you can hang a, a saline bag and you can actually irrigate your hand pieces, which is really nice because then it frees up the, the dental assistant's hands. When we do osteotomies, which is when we're making those holes in the bone for the implant, it's copious amounts of, um, of, of irrigation because we don't want to heat up the bone. We have to keep everything really clean and really cool, okay? All right, 
Selena, I'll have you um, pour some sterile saline in there. So we opened this this morning, but normally for each case would mean a, a, a brand new bottle. Just a whole bunch of, yeah. Good. Okay, so let's say Nina accidentally touched the side of that um, bottle to the, oh, <laughs> ding, 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 right? Then it's gone, it's gone. So if you're in surgery and someone sees you do that, it's, it's gone, because the outside of that container is, is not sterile. All right, so then I would fill up all my irrigation uh, syringes. I have all my, my four by fours. Um, we use a four by four when people are sleeping, a moist throat pack. I, I moisten it in sterile saline and I wring it out. And um, that goes in the back of the patient's throat because when you're asleep, you have no gag reflex, okay? And we wanna make sure that people don't aspirate um, anything. Um, when they're awake, obviously, we can't put anything back there. But I will take the yonker section. Uh, nope, the one right beside it, that long one. So this is um, a yonker. Yeah, go ahead and open it. This is all courtesy of Dr. Martina, by the way, all this stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Martina. Right? Yeah. Perfect. So this is not my surgical suction. My surgical suction is here. But if I had to clear an airway, um, this is what I would use on an asleep patient. And we just switch it out. I just take this off. I put this on. Usually before we put in a moist throat pack, we, we put the yonker in there and we make sure that there's no, um, you know, fluid or excretions or anything like that. Sometimes when you sedate people as well, um, they get this thing called a laryngospasm where they, they start to kind of choke. They're not really choking on anything, but sometimes putting the yonker in there will help with that. So we always have that just in case. And as you know, on my tray, you can't see this so much, but I don't have any um, forceps. I don't have any elevators. We're not taking out teeth. So I just have everything I need for the procedure. I'll just hold this up a little bit. Hopefully not drop it on the floor. There, oh, my hands in the way. Okay, everyone can see that. I have two blade handles, two reasons. If the blade gets dull and the surgeon wants a new blade, we don't have to wait for Nina to open us a new blade and load a new blade. I can just go, Shh, here you go. Um, <laughs> sometimes they want a 12 blade and a 15 blade. So if, if I don't know, I, I set up, or I'll ask them, and you know, I set up both. And then um, I'm going to ask you, oh, I don't have any, I forgot to grab some more sutures. Um, do you want to grab, oh, grab some? Yeah, grab me a pack of sutures, please. Sure. And uh, a blade. Doesn't matter if it's a 12 or a 15. Okay, so while we're waiting for Nina, I'll fill up my water. A lot of times you get really good, I'm going to come over on this side, at doing this with one hand. Okay, you're filling these up because you're, you're suctioning, you're retracting, and you don't have time to stop the surgery and fill these up, so you get really good at doing this, okay? We throw these away after each patient. We don't re-sterilize these. They, they go in the garbage. Unfortunately, there's a lot of waste with surgery. Um, at, at Dr. Martinez, yes, we use the dis disposal, disposable sterile gowns, but we also um, have gowns that we can launder and sterilize, and that's what they use in the hospital. So a lot of the drapes are, are reusable, rewashable, because we're trying to minimize. Okay. Okay, so you can, I'll have those sutures, please. So she can't just throw the whole thing down there, right? Because then, yeah, thank you. So she would have just said, here you go, then that's contaminated. I'll, ha I'll have the blade, please. And so with the blade, you can actually safely grab the blade out of there. And I'll show you how, because the sharp end is always facing down. See, I can just grab it right like that, okay? Now, whenever I open my blade, I always am trying to be really conscious of where I put it, because sometimes I'm just mindless and I'm just opening, 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 and it's like, oh, I knew I opened the blade, where is it, <laughs> right? So you wanna be really careful. Um, also, whenever there's a blade on your tray, just always say blade up, okay? The, there's, a, there's a blade there, so be, be careful. And you know from working in the lab how sharp they are. Um, what else do we need? Okay, I'll take that suction tubing, please. So we're assuming here that we have a closed suction system, which would be a canister on the wall. Okay, this is an open suction system that we have here at the college, and that is fine. Thank you. That is fine, um, except 
that this is sterile and that is just clean. So even though we run the evacuation um, fluid through our, our suction lines and we're using sterile, uh, you know, HVEs and uh, and LVEs, it, you can't really. Th there's always a risk of backflow. With this, there's zero risk. We throw those canisters away. They're disposed every patient. This is disposed every patient. So what I would do is I would hook this up to my suction. Oh, these aren't gonna fit. This will fit. Hook it up to my suction, and then I'm gonna pass this off to Nina, and she's gonna plug that into the wall, okay? So our suction's good. Now, I can't put this in the suction holder because it's not sterile. So I have all these little clips, like needle drivers, hemostats. Usually I have a towel clamp, but I didn't grab any for today. And so I'm just going to secure this to my work area so it doesn't end up on the floor while I finish setting up. Um, perfect. And I will take the tin foil now. And I'm going to use this. Remember this little cloth I saved? Mm -hmm. I'm going to use it to cover up my, my sterile saline. Now, it's really hard to, it's impossible to sterilize light handles, okay? There's some systems that you can actually clip these ones off and clip ones that are sterilizable on. Uh, but if you don't have that, all you do is you sterilize tinfoil. Just regular rental. Reg I like, like the good kind. Like, yeah. don't get cheap kind because it's flimsy. Get like Alcan. Yeah. <laughs> and then there we go. Okay? Then I can adjust my light during surgery. I can't turn the light on because I have my sterile gloves on, but that's what Nina's here for. Nina's here to help me open. She's here to turn on my suction, um, turn on my light. She's here to open stuff if I drop it, be a runner. Uh, I'm going to show you one other thing that's pretty cool. And that's for the whole procedure? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Always, 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 yeah. If, if uh, Courtney was going to be asleep, the RM, sometimes if you don't have another dental assistant can help with that, but it's not ideal. It's better to have another set of hands, especially if um, there's a lot of bleeding and you need a lot of retraction, I, I can't fill up my waters. I need, actually need that at that point. She might even have to scrub in for part of the surgery to help, okay? Um, and then the nurse could open the implants and whatnot for us. All right, I'm gonna get you to pass me one of those rapid rolls, just one of those. Even in general practices, we'll block both of our CDs off. Like, we're doing not as extensive, but same concept of one scrubbed in and one's running they'll come in and they'll do the image they'll come in when I've gone in and I'm just I'm just opening and dropping into their sterile field stuff as they need it same as what Kathy yeah. was saying this is obviously more extensive so you'd be kind of more in the room possibly scrubbed in yeah um, these are called rapid rolls they're sterile so when you open them you make sure you're gonna put your whatever tubing through the correct way so this, um, if I had an implant handpiece, I would cover the, the hose so it's sterile. Um, with the suction, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this, okay, and then Nina's going to pick that up, because I can't pick it up, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to hold on to this one end, and Nina's going to grab the white, and she's going to bring it all the way down. So if you could grab a little bit more, sorry, I had too much <laughs> And so you just want to make sure you have a good hold of um, whatever instrument you're, you're, you're barriering. And then as you can see, oh, I forgot to take the, um, the tape off. So let's open that other rapid roll. I messed up. You'll see why in a sec. Okay, so I forgot to take the tape off my rapid roll. So this is what you got to do before you um, put your barrier on. Take these little two pieces of tape. I don't need this, but I'm going to keep it in case something happens to this one. So I'm just going to put it right there. I can't give it to Nina because then it won't be sterile anymore. And I'm just going to take my tape and I'm going to secure my suction. Another thing you want to do with these barriers, as you know with your own barriers, you want to leave a bit of room here so that you can work the switch. If it's too tight, you can't work the switch. I can't put this back on the um, holder now either because it will get contaminated. So I'm going to have to clip this with my other suction. Just like that. Okay. 
where are we at now? I wonder if we can get little Miss Courtney. Oh, so right behind Nina is the implant kit. So you can grab that, and it's double bagged. Typically, it would be double wrapped, but I didn't have wrapping big enough. When we double bag things, we want to be able to see the borders on all four sides, but I didn't have a bag big enough. So for this purpose, I didn't see the two bags in there. Yeah. And then another thing I yeah you can actually another thing I forgot to put in there was my little sterile indicator. So you have to always make sure that those go into surgical kits. So again, probably if you put that on the tr on the cart, yeah. And then I'll come over and again. Sometimes this gets stuck because of the, the tape, and then Nina would just rip it off. So here's my implant kit. I'm going to put it down. I can put it here because all that's sterile. And this bag is sterile because it was inside the other bag, but that would be kind of a nightmare if it wouldn't have been double bagged, right? You're going to want the surgery for double bagging. Think about when you're transferring stuff, you accidentally drop stuff against clothes, anything like that. So really just uh, confirm. I um, always like to have an open garbage or a recycle when we're opening, just so that when the patient comes in, it doesn't look like really messy. Oftentimes, your, your surgeon is like pacing back and forth, like, come on, hurry up. So this takes me like going really fast, 20 minutes, with a partner. And she's also running back and forth with the patient and taking pre-op records and giving the mouth rinse and getting the prescriptions ready talking to the ride if they're going to have sedation. What else are you doing? Get, get, helping with the local, putting the topical on. So it's like 20 minutes is like pushing Answering it. any questions, anything like that, even for the rides, just confirming. We never know how long we're going to be. Yeah. So you always want their name and number in case we're done earlier or something gets delayed. Like, so you're gathering a lot of information for like patient care, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, going over post-op ahead of time because patients just want to leave when they're done. We also do the payment most of the time ahead of time um, because the patient doesn't want to go stand at the desk after. And yes, in the off, we can book appointments and go over finances in the operatory. But after a surgery, patients just want to go. And all this has been pre-consulted. Like very rarely does someone just come in and boom, let's do an implant today because um, it requires a lot. If someone's coming in from, let's say, the cusp, Okay, and they want to have their consult and their implants done on all in one day, we totally can um, accommodate them. And if we know because they're being referred by their family dentist that this is what's going to happen today, usually the, a nurse or someone, a CDA from the practice will phone the patient. So the, the front desk has gone over all the finances and then they'll say, oh, you know, someone from the back, from the clinical staff is going to give you a call and go over all the other expectations. And then Nina would call and just say, you're having your surgery tomorrow and do you have any questions? And go over allergies, go over all that stuff because, you know, you don't have that, that time in between, all right? So, you know, part of consent is not just surgical, it's also um, financial consent is really, really important. So, you know, to, to have a patient come and get an implant, you know, it's very time consuming, it's very expensive, and then, you know, to find out at the end of the appointment that, what, how, how much is it? You know, like, it, like honestly, they, they could come back at you and say, I was not informed, yeah. and, and legally not pay you. Okay, so I know it's like it's it's. They'll um, try that even when they have had the conversation. Yeah, which is why we usually get people to sign a, yeah. a treatment plan. Um, yeah. You know, and it's it's sometimes it's uncomfortable for clinical staff to talk about the money, but you have to become comfortable with it because it is part of consent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think we're ready for Courtney. Um, do you want to go go get? As we say, go get. Hello. How are Hi. You? Good. <laughs> Hi Courtney. Hi. How are you doing? Good. I'm Catherine. So how's your freezing feeling? Good. Good. I'm gonna get you to pop that little bonnet on that's behind you there. Thank you. And if you feel comfortable, you can take your mask off now. Good. And are you warm enough? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so we're going to lie you back, and Nina and I are going to get you ready for when the surgeon comes in. All right? So we'll just put you back here. If um, Courtney was having sedation, then th at this point, Nina would be putting uh, vital signs like monitors on that we leave on during the, the, the entire appointment. Shayla, I'll get you to just adjust the camera so we can see Courtney a little bit better. Like, uh, yeah. 
I don't know how to move it properly. And I want to make sure that you can still see the, the camera. Like, how do I move it? It's actually, that's the handle. Yeah, so you'll see. Yep, perfect. That's wonderful. That's good? Yep, that's excellent. And are you comfortable, Courtney? Okay. So, if she was having um, sedation, like I mentioned, Nina would be putting all the monitors on. She'd be opening up a little nasal cannula. She'd be putting, a, like, a little breathing um, apparatus into her nostrils. Patients really like that because it's almost like a spa, right? They're getting oxygen and um, they're getting an IV, <laughs> which I always tell them it hydrates them. So that's the little cannula there. And I'm sure you've all seen those, um, but they that would stay on through the whole procedure. And this, is, this would be about the point that we would put that on. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna prep our patient. So Nina is going to, um, with some gloves on. She's gonna take one of those little prep packages, those 3M packages, mm -hmm. and we're gonna wash all the way around. Um, you, you don't have to do that, but she would wash all the way around Courtney's mouth. So that's chlorhexidine, okay? And you start at the mouth and you go all the way around and you work yourself out and we do that three times. And we kind of even go down the neck. Um, if a patient is wearing safety glasses, we do the safety glasses. We don't wanna get that into the eyes yeah that's called solute prep okay so it's a it's a skin prep it's not like alcohol that they put on your skin before they give you an injection it's it's a lot nicer and it actually feels pretty good on the skin so we saw you prep one time two times three times okay and then I'll get you to open the split sheet for me and so with doing the, the face prep that's just we're gonna we're, we're reducing microbes because okay. our skin is not sterile and we're going to be obviously touching the outside of Courtney's face with our gloves. Can you just grab it out? Yeah, you can grab it right out of there. And then you can open the outer part. Yep. Good. Nice. And you see how Nina's doing that away from her? Okay. And then I'm going to grab this. And there's a little arrow on here that says split end. Okay facing up. So we want the split facing up. So I'm going to lay this on top of you. Okay, Courtney? And then I'm just going to start unfolding this like so and like so. Sometimes you have help with this. You don't always. And because Nina's not sterile, sorry, I was reaching <laughs> there. Um, she can't help me. Okay? If something falls below, um, let's say like the mid like the base of the chair here, it's considered not sterile. All right, so if something drops low, so we're good now. I take all my tape off. And I pass it off because we want our operatory to look neat and tidy. One thing I likely would have done, Courtney, before I brought you in, is I likely would have covered up the back counter a little bit better. Are you doing okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is this making you nervous? No. I'm going to cover you up like a little bug in a rug. <laughs> okay, so this... I'll try not to get it too much on your skin. This <laughs> salt. Okay. Isn't she cute? Yeah. <laughs> Just a little snug little bug. Oh. You can take a photo. Why okay. not? Okay. So you can see how this would keep our field very very sterile. Okay. All right. Are you, Are you okay? So comfy in there. Okay. And it, it's sticky all the way along. There we go. Okay. Now. What's that? Okay. Now. Oh my God, you're um, so cute. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my suction. Courtney, is it okay if I just put a couple of my items just on your on your drape here? Okay. I'm going to clip this to my drape so then my suction is right there. Okay, I don't have to reach for it. That probably went a bit too far down. We don't want to see that. And then we also have this little thing here, okay, that's going to keep it in place for me. Um, if we had the, the implant handpiece here today, it would be behind the where the surgeon is and it would come this way and I would clip that to the drape as well. So the handpiece, the suction, um, and then I also like to keep some extra four by fours ready to go so I'm not reaching around. I'll often keep stacks of these sterile and packages with Nina so if I need more she just opens. Anything you think you're going to need. More sutures, 
another blade, more saline, more gauze. You just have it at the ready. And I know this seems like a lot of stuff, but before I set up one of these procedures, I have like grab and go bins. So I have like Tupperware bins with everything for a case in the bin. So I don't have to like go get this, get that. I forgot the sutures this morning. Um, but uh, you know, so you just, oh, implant, okay. You bring your bin, you bring your carts, and you just start going to town. Now there's another way that you can, um, if you didn't have a split sheet, let's just say you had, now Nina, behind you there, there's a medium drape sheet right on the top, yeah. So that's big, it doesn't have a split in it, but it would definitely cover all of Courtney, like what are the um, uh, dimensions? 40, 102 centimeters by 180 centimeters. Yeah. So we could, you know, drape Courtney no problem, but then I still want to cover up her bonnet because her bonnet, like, you know, we're, we're rubbing against it maybe, or we're touching it. Um, so I'm going to use my patient drape that I showed you earlier. And there's a little trick to these. You're going to be so snug and... <laughs> She's going to be like, nap time. Okay, yeah. so I'm, I'm going to open it halfway. I'm going to leave the open part, not the crease, facing Courtney's feet. And then what I'll do is I'll get you to lift your head up if you can. Okay, rest back down. Okay, so we're just pretending that she doesn't have this split sheet on. Lift your head up again. There you go, rest back down. If she was asleep, then um, you would have to have someone, like I'd have to wait for the doctor to be here to put the head drape on, because he'd have to, they would have to help me lift the head up. Okay, so then I just do this. And I'm gonna grab another one of my towel clamps. It happens to be a mosquito. Okay, and then this is all folded out of the way. Okay, <laughs> so that's another way to make sure if you didn't have a split sheet. Um, these are really expensive, so that's why most offices won't have split sheets. We don't use them if it's a single tooth. If we know the, the doctor's going to come in in five minutes, bam, the implants in, we'll just use like a medium drape and, and a head drape, okay? Um, so then I would make sure that... I'm going to pass that off to you, Nina. I would make sure that the implant kit is ready for the doctor, because typically they're grabbing their own uh, drills, okay? Um, I have worked for surgeons that like me to put the drills on for them, but most of, most of the oral surgeons like to put their own on. Um, but you are responsible for making sure they put it back into the right slot, especially if you're doing more than one implant, and also make sure that if there's like a lot of debris or bone, on one of these that you wipe it off with like I always have um, even an extra little bowl of saline here uh, just to, to wipe off a any of the instruments. Okay. Is that what they'll do a lot of times with that extra little bowl? That's what I've seen is yeah. they'll just drop the tip into there so that it doesn't dry and then by the time you take it to stereo it's like still good to process without having to take apart your kit and scrub exactly, it. Exactly, exactly. Um, so we've made a flap in the gum, we've opened up the tissue, We've started an osteotomy and it gets a little bit wider, a little bit wider. We want to make sure it's smaller than the diameter of the implant we're placing because if we make too big of an osteotomy, the implant's just going to spin, okay? We don't want to make it too tight because then it won't integrate. It, it, the bone is too tight, so it has to be just right. These, this, all, all this stuff has been pre-planned, okay? Like we're not taking a shot in the dark here, but I might have a couple of different options for the dentist um, and I, I another thing um, I would have done before I draped Courtney is I would have um, put a lead blanket on her okay because I guarantee you every time you're going to take an intra-op PA uh, that the dentist or this whoever surgeon dentist is going to have one of the drills in place or maybe a direction indicator in the osteotomy and he wants you to take a PA because he wants to see where, where we're at, where are we at, how close is that nerve, where's the sinus, how's my angle. So rather than having to like lift the drape, slide a lead blanket on, I just tell the patient, we're just going to put the lead on because we're going to take another x-ray in the middle of the procedure. And it's almost like a weighted blanket. Patients really like it. It's nice and cozy. So um, we're going to take an x-ray. We've confirmed the length and the angle. Everything's great. And I'm going to say, I'll take that 4.8, please. This isn't really an implant, but um, it's like an expired healing abutment. And Nina's going to open. She can grab that inner package out. And the inner package is not sterile. And then she does have to drop this onto the tray. And that's perfect. 
And let's just say this is my implant. The dentist is going to attach it to the driver and the handpiece. We're going to place it. Um, and then we're going to decide whether we're putting on a cover screw um, or a healing abutment. So a cover screw, if, if we don't get really good primary stability, then we put a cover screw on, we close the gums back up, they come back for three or four months later. If things are nice and solid in there, we'll put the healing cap on, and then when they come back four months later, they're good to go for an impression. Like, there's no more surgery, but it just depends on primary stability. Um, another thing I have here on my surgical tray is a discoid cleoid, my favorite multi-tool in the whole wide world. We use this, you know, in restorative to carve amalgams. We use it um, in, uh, when we're doing prophies, if there's black line stain or if there's a lot of plaque. But we also, when the dentist placed the implant, he's placing it at bone level. And then when he goes to put a healing cap on or a cover screw, if, if there's a ledge of bone that it's getting caught on, we don't want to take a, a hand piece and drill bone. So we take a little discoid and we clean up around that implant, okay? Because we don't want to scrape the top of the implant either. It's very like, fragile. So that's the discoid cleoid. Um, so then implants in place, everything looks good, sutures are in, and we're done. End of procedure. The dentist or surgeon takes off his gloves and he says, I want a post-op pan. And we'll see you in two weeks for a follow-up, okay? And then that's it. And then we just start uncovering little Miss Courtney here. Sit her up, not too fast. Um, does anyone have any questions? Um, when you guys are doing the surgery, right, you usually have like the nomad in the room. And, yes. Like, I would come, like Kathy would set oh, up the x-ray. Yeah. And, but I don't want to touch a patient if they're not scrubbed in to the level that they are, but then she would kind of direct me and I would bring it over to her or the x-ray head would be in the back. Yeah, so I can place the holder because the holder's sterile, okay? Um, typically though, See, it's really, this is where Alara comes into play because with a sedated patient, someone has to hold that film in place. So we either use a hemostat or we use a snap array. The handle of the snap array is sterile. I can touch that. I don't really want to touch the, the film because it's not sterile. Oftentimes, um, I know with Dr. Bell, he will hold it himself. He doesn't want the assistant being exposed. His hand is not in the primary beam. It's probably four to six inches away. It's not ideal, but there's really no other way around it. Like you have to think, what are the benefits of taking this intra-op x-ray compared to, you know, you want a diagnosis, where is this implant, right? Um, if the patient's awake, it's, no, it's not a big deal. Um, but often they'll have like something sticking up out of that osteotomy that they can't bite down. So even then you have to hold it in place. So um, Nina's holding the, the x-ray head one of the surgical team is holding the film, and it's just one of those things. You just try not to be in front of the primary beam as much as you possibly can. Because um, what they'll do is they'll take one of the drills and think about endo, about how the ends stick out yeah. so you can't bite down. That's what these will do too. But it, then it shows them the lines that are in there, and that, that's what we're just trying to make sure that they're happy with those lines before they place it on. Are you, are you too hot? Right? No, I'm good. Are you comfortable? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you gonna go to sleep? Yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think we've covered everything. I'm just gonna mention because oh, yeah. I know Kathy goes into auto mode with us, and she does this all, but. When you got your implants, you're gonna have them leave the packaging in the room. There is oh, yes. all the lot number and everything that needs to be recorded into your clinical charting. Some of them will have a little sticker on the inside that you're gonna just either stick right onto a paper chart or we'll stick it on a piece of paper, write the name yeah. and scan it into their file. Um, but you wanna make sure that we've got the lot number and everything else. All the information on here will be recorded in your clinical notes on top of everything else that you've used. Anesthetic, um, IV, whatever they use for IV sedation, every single thing that Kathy has shown you is recorded, um, just to verify it. But you do need this lot number. It also tells them the size, so when they come back for the next implants, they're gonna refer to that. We might have three in the room that they've treatment planned, and then whatever one they go with, we have to make sure we've got that all recorded. So, there's some a memory notes are quite there. extensive for implants, for a very good reason. Sorry? Do you want to open that collagen membrane down there? I just want to, let, let's oh, yeah. open it right up. It's expired. I got the, I got all this from Dr. Martina too. So this is um, a Stroman membrane. 
And you'll see, <laughs> this will have a reference number and everything as well. Yeah. The packaging is ridiculous. But you'll <laughs> see, yeah, cool. those are all the stickers. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I was talking about. Yeah, and we need that. multiples. Yeah. We need it for grafting to go in the patient chart, but we also keep a running binder if there was a recall, if there was some issue. Okay, we need to know. Um, we need lot numbers. But like show them like how many envelopes are in envelopes just to get that little tiny square out of there. Okay. So that was one envelope. Like look at the size oh. of this membrane. Okay. Oh so then, you know, typically what I would do, I would grab some pickups to take this out of here. This is one that you have to rehydrate or reconstitute, so that's another reason why it's really important to have a little bowl of saline. Um, there's actually co quite a lot of grafting materials that come in granules that you'll have to reconstitute about 10 minutes before, just with a little saline. And just like when you're filling up your pumice um, dappen dishes, if you put too much water in, no big deal, just stick a two by two in there and it'll, it'll suck it up. Uh, and the dentist will guide you and like this is Stroman is probably the most common. Like what do you guys use at your office for your drafting? Use more, uh, oh, by, by oh yeah, yeah. Um, so there's like different companies, but you just really have to read all the all the manufacturers directions. So then th third envelope, we're, we're still not there yet <laughs> to get this little tiny piece of collagen membrane out of there. Um, sort of a new thing, it's actually not a new thing. I can pass this to you if you want to feel what it feels like, you can pass it around. What we're doing now is we're taking um, blood products. Um, if we're starting an IV, great, we do it right at the IV start and we fill up a, a, a few cc's of the patient's own blood and usually a, a couple of different um, vials and we run it through a centrifuge and it separates the blood and it forms the patient's own membranes. So instead of using a collagen membrane, instead of using something out of a box. It's actually from the patient's own body. Membranes are um, to cover over the surgical site before we close the flap, okay? We did show that, remember that PRF where they look like little slugs when they separate it? That's yeah. exactly what they're using. Yeah. So they design it in either to go into the socket or flatten it and go over the site. Yeah. So always have, I always have like my bone bucket in every surgical case, even extractions, because lots of times they take the tooth out and then they're like, oh, we're gonna have to, you know, preserve this ridge. So always have like a little, you know, whatever procedure and then everything's good to go. As soon as you're done, restock it. Make sure you record your stickers, like Nina said. Um, and uh, then when it's time to sit our girl up, you just want to make sure you... Yeah. Oh, Sean, you want to take your picture? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Ready for surgery. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions before uh, I uncover Courtney? Pretty straightforward. Uh, so this is why we call it Christmas dinner because it took me a long time to set it up, but then uh, the surgeon comes in, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, and it's and then it takes me a lot longer to clean it all up again. Um, I never leave my open garbage. I always have it all that tucked away. You just kind of look around your operatory, make sure that. It's as clean as possible, um, you know. And when you're opening the implants, if you're if you're walking by, this is really important. And someone says, "Oh, can you open this implant for me?" Just be really careful. Um, the outer package is not sterile. The inner package is not sterile. The only thing that's sterile is what's inside the inner package. And so when you drop it, you just can't touch that outer package to anything, or or it's gone. It's done. Okay. You try to open it over the tray, like you noticed when I was having Sussy Kathy, at least if I had it open and it did fall, hopefully it would fall from inside a sterile bag onto a sterile field, right? Yeah. Versus me and my magnetic floor. floor. <laughs> yeah, <It'll fall>. Nina. <laughs> Maria? Oh, uh, where does all the garbage go? Is it in the garbage separate? can after. Well, I like try to... Res room or is there a separate garbage? Um, well, usually if it's a, a surgical, there's lots of like bloody gauze. And so I'll, I'll probably change the garbage before I bring the next patient in. And so we were, we were doing that, but now that it's COVID, we take the garbage out after every single surgery. We okay. don't leave someone else's bloody gauze in the same operatory and then bring another, another patient in. That's, um, I'm glad you reminded me about gauze. So I, I will count my gauze. I will know that I had 10 four by fours and six two by twos. 
because at the end of the procedure, I want to make sure that I didn't leave a, a throat pack in. Um, sometimes if a dentist elevates a big flap, he'll leave a little two by two tucked in there while he goes and grabs bone from, let's say, the maxillary tuberosity. Some patients don't want donor bone. They want bone from their own mouth. So I, I just want, I don't want to leave any two by twos or four by four, fours behind. At the hospital, you have, they, the nurses make us count them twice. They make us count the, the, um, the anything sharp, like the, how many sutures, and they're really, really strict about it. And one time, Dr. Nato, we, we finished his surgery, and he had used a few different sutures. And he's so used to, he likes to take all the sharps off the tray himself, like th that's his thing. And he did that, and he went and he put the sharp in the sharps container, and uh, the nurse's count was off, and they were almost going to send the patient for a chest x-ray because we couldn't find it when he... And see, he had left the room. He had taken his gloves off and gone. And I said, I'm, I'm positive he put that suture in the sharps. But he finally came back right before diagnostic imaging was on their way in with the big machine. And he goes, oh, no, I threw it in the sharps. And they went, oh, okay. So, yeah, it's really important just to kind of keep an eye on things. Same thing, like I said, when you open a blade, make sure you know it's open there. Make sure you know. If someone comes in, Nina comes in, okay, let's clean up. Courtney's gone. It's like there's two blades up. You know, because not all surgeons take their sharps. Some do, some don't. Um, some surgeons don't want you touching the scalpel blade at all. They'll pass it to them, they'll put it back wherever they want to put it. Um, it's just a preference. I think we'll get this young lady covered here. Do you have any questions? All right, well, thanks everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That was